Welcome, Jack Ma. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. We, uh, we, um, we've all become very cognizant of Jack and his story. And when Alibaba went public with the largest IPO in history, uh, we knew a lot more about him. So I want to talk about his personal story. I want to talk about how many times he tried and failed and what kept him going. I want to talk about where he is today and how he got here and where he is going and how he expects to get there. And if he gets there, what will it all mean for him and for the people uh, that he wants to inspire? So I begin with this question, though, Jack. Why are you back at Davos? <laughs> it's a... It's a Long break for seven years. I think um, my last time trip here was year 2008. But um, I was coming for year 2001 for the Young Global Leader for Tomorrow. And I think, remember, I never heard about the Davos when I came. But when I came, I, uh, I, in the Switzerland, so many young people demonstrate. Was such a horrible thing that I was, and, and I asked them, well, why did they do it? They say anti globalization. And I say, why? Globalization is a great thing. Why people you know, don't like it? <laughs> and then we come all the way for two hours here. There's a machine gun, there's a people checking us. I say, oh God, is that, is that a forum or is it a prison? We're going to go, is that? <laughs> but when I joined the forum, uh, as the young global leader, I was thrilled by uh, so many ideas. And for the first three, four years, I learned what, what, does, what does the globalization mean? What does the corporate citizenship mean? What about social responsibility mean? And all these new ideas. And I see so many great leaders talking about leadership. And I benefit a lot. In the year 2008 and <clears throat> nine, when the financial crisis came, I think it's better go back to work. Because we can never win the world by talking. So we go back, spend seven years. Now I come back, I think it's time to do something return. Because I learned so much Let's talk 12 about years that. ago. So why I should not talk to the young global leader of today, sharing with them how we've gone through. Okay. So that was the thing. Let's start with where you are today. Just how big is Alibaba? How many people come every day? How many people come in a week? Uh, how fast is it growing? Yeah, we have uh, over 100 million buyers visiting our site, shopping our site um, every day. And we created... 100 uh, million, million every day. We created... Um, uh, 14 million jobs for China, directly and indirectly. <clears throat> and um, we grow from 18 people to 30,000 people, 18 people in my apartment, to now we have four big campers. Compared to 15 years ago, we were big. But compared to 15 years later, we're still a baby. And, and <laughs> how big will you be 15 years from now? I think 15 years ago, I told my team that um, 15 years, in the past 15 years, we grow from nothing to this size. And 15 years later, I want people to see no about Alibaba, no Taobao, because it's already everywhere. I want 15 years ago when we talk about what is e-commerce, why small business can use this e-commerce, this internet can do business across the nation. And I hope 15 years later, people forget about e-commerce because they think it's like electricity. Nobody thinks it's a high tech today. Now, this is something that I don't want 15 years later. We still walk on the street talking about why and how e-commerce can help people. Talk about the IPO. Were you, did it exceed your expectations? Well, it's a pretty small IPO, 250 Yes, yeah, two, the largest two, IPO two. in the history of Wall Street. Of we raised, we, yeah, we and raised. number two was a Chinese bank. Thank you. I, I, uh, I remember year 2001, we went to uh, raise some uh, five million, three million venture capitalist dollars in the USA and got rejected. 
And I say we come back raising some a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I think that, you know, what we think more about is for $25 billion, how we can spend the money efficiently. Because this is not the money. This is the trust from the world, the trust from those people. They want you to do better jobs to help more people. They want to have a good return. So I think um, give me more pressure because um, when our, our market cap is bigger than IBM, or certain day we're bigger than Walmart. We're one of the top 10, 15 largest market cap company in the world. I told my team and myself, is that true? We're not that good. Because yeah. years ago, people say, oh, Alibaba model is terrible. Does not make money, have this and that, all the big bad things because Amazon is better, eBay is better, Google is better, and there's no such model like Alibaba in the USA. So I told myself and people, we were better than people thought. But today, when we are that big size, I said, no, we are not that good as people thought. We are just a company 15 years old. Average age is 27, 28 years old, young people. We're doing something that human beings have never tried. So I want, I want to talk about the future. Let me take you back uh, to when you were born in Hangzhou, uh, where the headquarters still are. Yep. Uh, and your campus is there. You don't have a loot. Don't, don't move your loot. Your headquarters your there. there. Yeah. You found it there, loot there. You grew up in the 60s. 64. That was <laughs> Born in 64. That was the time of the Cultural Revolution. Yeah, it was the end of the Cultural Revolution. It was, uh, well, my grandfather was uh, a tiny landlord. Was considered, after liberation, was considered to be a bad guy. So um, <clears throat> I was, um, I, 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 I know how tough it was uh, when I was a kid. You tried to get into three colleges. Mm -hmm. Each time they rejected you. No, I, I tried. There is an examination that young people, if you want to go to university, you have to taste, take the examinations. So I failed three times. Right. But a lot of fail. I failed for funny things that I failed a key primary school test for two times. And I failed uh, um, like a two, three times for the middle school, middle schools. And uh, you, you would never believe in, in Hangzhou, my city, there's only one middle school that lasts only one year. It was changed from primary school to middle school because our graduates of our, our, our school, no, univers you, no middle school accept us because we were too bad. Yeah. <laughs> they would become a middle school. <laughs> what effect did it have, though, uh, being rejected? Well, I think we have to get used to it. We're not that good. Even today, we still have a lot of people reject us. I think um, when I uh, in the, graduated from universities, and before I, you know, for three years, I tried to fill in the universities. So I applied jobs for 30 times, got rejected. I went for a police. They said, no, you're not good. I went to even the uh, KFC. When KFC came to China, come to my city, <laughs> 20, 24 people went for the job. Yeah. 23 people were accepted. I was the only one guy. <laughs> and we went for police. Five people, four of them accepted. I was the only guy that I rece received it. So to me, being turned down, rejected. Oh, by the way, I told you that I, would, I applied for Harvard yeah. for 10 times rejected. <laughs> I know it would be rejected. I just don't want to say that. Yeah, sorry now. <laughs> Ten times you wrote them and said, I'd like to come to Harvard. Yeah. And then I told myself, somebody I should go teach there, buddy. <laughs> I, I, I think that can be arranged. Um, Richard Nixon came to Hangzhou. Yeah. And after that, tourists flooded the place. Yeah. And that's how you learned English. Yeah. I really... Like the, I don't know why, at 12, 13 years old, that time I suddenly fell in love into the language, the English. And there's no place you can, you can learn English at that time. There's no books, English books. 
So I went to the uh, Hangzhou Hotel, now called Hangzhou Shangri-La Hotel, because that was the hotel uh, can receive the foreign visitors. So every morning for nine years, I showed them around as a free guide, and they taught me English. And uh, I think that changed me. Today, I'm 100% made in China. I've never got a one-day train outside China. Yeah. And uh, people, when people talk to me, say, Jack, how can you speak English like that? Why sometimes you, you talk like an Amer Western guys? I think that was the nine years. These Western for tourists opened my mind because everything they told me are so different from the things I learned from the schools and from my parents. So now I have a habit. Whatever I see, whatever I read, I use my mind. Think about it for two and minutes. And is that how Ma Jun became Jack Ma? Actually, Jack, the name was given by uh, a, a, a lady in tennis. She's a tourist. She came here and she said, she came to Hangzhou. We had a, we become a pen friends. Ma Ring is so difficult to pronounce. So she said, do you, do you have an English name? I said, don't. So can you give me an English name? She said, uh, okay. She said, my father called the Jack, my husband called Jack. What do you think about Jack? I said, good. <laughs> so I've been using that for that many years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, first visit to America, 1995? 1995, 1995. yeah. I, uh, I came here for a project helping the local government to building up a highway. Uh, and you tried the internet? I tried the internet in Seattle. And um, in a building called the USA Bank. I don't know whether the USA Bank is still there or not, <laughs> but there's a building. And uh, this, uh, my friend opened a small office, which is like uh, only 10% bigger than this room. And there are a lot of much computers in there. 